Archbishop Salvatore Cordelion of San Francisco is calling on Catholics to pray rosaries and send roses to Speaker Nancy Pelosi following the House passage of the pro-abortion Women's Health Protection Act. Cordelion stated, quote, a conversion of heart of the majority of our congressional representatives is needed on this issue, beginning with the leader of the House, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I am therefore inviting all Catholics to join in a massive invisible campaign of prayer and fasting for Speaker Pelosi. Commit to praying one rosary a week and fasting on Fridays for her conversion of heart. Catholics can sign up to send a rose to Speaker Pelosi by going to benedictinstitute.org. Cordelion is Pelosi's archbishop, and he's been a vocal critic of her pro-abortion stance, calling the recent Women's Health Protection Act, quote, nothing short of child sacrifice. And joining us now on Skype is Archbishop Salvatore Cordelion of the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Your Excellency, welcome back to the show. Tell us about this new prayer initiative of yours and why send roses. The rose idea came to my mind because we were approaching the uh, feast day of St. Teresa of Lisieux, the, the little flower of the child Jesus. And uh, we know about the tradition of her, well, that she said she would uh, shower, uh, do good and have do good on earth from heaven and shower a rose, sh uh, send a shower of roses. And there's uh, so many stories of people having their, having their prayer answered as seeking her intercession and then with the sign given of the rose. So that coupled with the praying of the rosary, we know whenever Our Lady appears anywhere, she always asks mm -hmm. us to pray the rosary. Uh, rosary uh, coupled with fasting, the fasting is the other part of it. Uh, we need to make uh, those kind of sacrifices, bodily penance. So I'm asking people to pray a rosary once a week for her specifically and for uh, and to fast on Fridays for her. The church, of course, understands a fast meeting, just one meal. It's possible to take a little bit of food other two times mm -hmm. during the day if, if necessary, but best yet to keep a strict fast on those days. So we, we need to turn back to God with penance mm -hmm. and and for the conversion of what I call her maternal heart. She speaks so fondly of her children. Uh, I know she loves her family. So there's, there's a good maternal heart in there. We need to ask God to touch that and, and turn it back toward life. That's beautiful. And prayer and fasting, that's a powerful combination. You have called the Women's Health Protection Act, which did pass the House, nothing short of child sacrifice. I know you've seen this clip, Your Excellency, but I want to play for you how Speaker Pelosi reacted to that. The Archbishop of the city, uh, that area of San Francisco, and I have a disagreement about who should decide this. I believe that uh, God has given us a free will to honor our responsibilities. What is your reaction to that, how Speaker Pelosi responded? She almost seemed to distance herself from saying you are her archbishop, and she defended her stance with free will. Well, we all agree with that. Certainly God has given us free will, and God respects our free will even when we use it to kill the innocent. So uh, there's no, yeah, we have free will, but the, the Christian knows that uh, he or she must use the free will in accordance with God's will, which means we need a well-formed conscience in order to decide what is the right thing to do in a given situation. So it, it's a matter of forming the conscience properly so we can align our will with God's will and do what God wants us to do. Mm. I want to go back to that prayer initiative with the roses and the rosaries. Can you speak more, Your Excellency, to the responsibility we as Catholics have who are living at a time like this, our responsibility to pray and fast for an end to abortion? There's so much politicization of all of the issues nowadays, and especially this issue. There's so much bitterness, so much rhetoric. Uh, we need, again, to turn turn to God with, with prayer and with fasting to sensitize ourselves to the plight of so many women who, in reality, don't have choice. The problem is they don't have choice. When, when they're given choice, they choose to give life. So to sensitize ourselves to that and pray for God's mercy upon our country, that God might touch the hearts of so many people. Like I said, a majority in the House of Representatives need a conversion of heart, mm -hmm. that they would vote for something like this. Uh, uh, unfettered access to abortion for all nine months. Uh, that's why I called it uh, tantamount to, to child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So but we, we need prayer and fasting if we have any hope uh, that God will, will bless us in turning our nation back mm -hmm. to a culture. 
And you have spoken very clearly saying abortion is a satanic ritual. Can you speak more to that? Because our culture equates abortion with health care. <laughs> yes, it's another one of the smoke screens they use, you know, the smoke screen of choice, the smoke screen, screen of health care, of, of reproductive choice, and so forth. The Texas heartbeat law is being challenged by the satanic temple, precisely on the grounds of it's a violation of their religious liberty. They need to have access to abortion to carry out their rituals. It's a satanic practice. Mm -hmm. And when we figure that, what is it, one out of four pregnancies in our country ends in an abortion, we, we're literally in the grip of the devil. Mm -hmm. So we that's why we need prayer and fasting so, so, so uh, much, so greatly. So I hope everyone will uh, engage in this prayer and fasting campaign. I hope so as well. And our viewers can find more information at Benedict Institute. Dot org. Archbishop Salvatore Cordelion of San Francisco, thank you for your leadership and your time. You're welcome. Thank you.